Some of the best universities in the world are in the United States, and studying at such an institution can be a rewarding experience. Cambridge qualifications are recognized in many U.S. institutions, and in this video, we want to share with you everything you need to know about applying to a university in the U.S. But first, some interesting facts about U.S. universities. Did you know? University and college both refer to bachelor degree-granting institutions. A bachelor's degree generally takes four years to complete, and there's room for academic flexibility. For example, you can major in one subject or two. Some community colleges offer two-year associate degrees, and these can count towards entry to a university at a later stage. Also, some universities in the USA don't require admission standardized tests such as SAT and ACT. I think Cambridge students stand out uh, because uh, by engaging in that particular curriculum, uh, which is very rigorous, very high quality, it's an indication that the student is willing to challenge himself or herself. Um, and the University of California wants students who are willing to challenge themselves and who succeed in those challenges. Well, Cambridge students stand out because, first of all, it's a, a worldwide standard uh, of excellence for college and university preparation. They also stand out because they're from all over the world. They bring an important diversity and consistency of training, uh, and further, that the kind of education they've received prepares them for college success. Bear in mind the following when making your university choices. The location, the size, the cost, financial aid, the choice of majors, student clubs and organizations, and career services. Students, when they're looking for the right fit for a university in the U.S., and particularly at Vanderbilt, I think it's critical for them to understand what we're looking for. And we're looking for students who have the ability to think, analyze, connect the dots, and then at the end see the whole picture we're in such an information technology today that memorization is not what we're looking for. We're looking for thinkers and those that can draw conclusions. To determine the right fit for any university and, and for any student, it's a, it's a, a process of study. It's a, it's a process of investigating. Uh, students are taking a huge step and I think they need to spend time thinking about where they want to go. Um, in many instances, it's the basics. How large of a university do you want to attend? Uh, what is the major focus that you want to study? Um, is it located in a, in a region of the world or the country that you're living in that you want to live in for three or four or five years? Um, so it's really, in a sense, important but also very basic, and it's very necessary for students to do this work ahead of time. At this stage, you don't need to choose your major. It's not uncommon to change majors within the first two years of study. But if you know what you want to study, make sure the university offers the degree course you're interested in. Also, you may want to consider the following aspects when you are researching universities. What is the student to faculty teaching ratio? Will you have access to the faculty outside of class time? Are there any undergraduate research opportunities? Are honors or specialized programs available? What types of opportunities are available to study abroad? What facilities does the library have and what are the opening hours? Are students required to live on campus? Does the university assist with searching for off-campus housing? Can you take part in internships, community service, or volunteering for credit? I think one reason international students come to the U.S. to study is they have a great deal of intellectual freedom. That is, at most places around the world, you're expected to choose a course of study very early on, before you even enroll. At U.S. colleges and universities, we like you to declare a major so we know what you, we understand you. At the same time, we provide a great deal of latitude to change that major, to explore our curriculum, and then to move on after you have a depth of knowledge to get to get the kind of professional education that you need to move forward. Be realistic about your university choices. Some of the top universities in the United States admit fewer than 6% of all students who apply. 
These universities are looking for academic excellence and exceptional extracurricular involvement. However, there are over 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States. It is important to research the incoming class profile and admission requirements of each university to determine whether it is an academic fit for you. In general, U.S. universities will expect you to have at least five subjects at Cambridge IGCSE or GCSE or Cambridge O-Levels, covering five core subject areas of English, math, science, a foreign language, and a social science. Also, most U.S. colleges require subjects at Cambridge International AS or A-Level or ACE and some extracurricular involvement. You should be following at least the standard curriculum that students at your school normally take for university entry. For highly selective institutions, you need to demonstrate above the standard curriculum. The kinds of skills we're looking for from students who apply to us when we review an application are those who are uh, very well-rounded in, in their approach to their education. Um, we look for students who have strong writing skills. Uh, we look for students who have strong quantitative reasoning skills. And we also look for something we call a, a kind of critical sensibility, an ability to dig deep into the topic with enthusiasm, with interest, um, and with the idea that this pursuit is uh, not only important but necessary for this stage of their life. Um, Cambridge students, I think, are, are quite well prepared in that regard in the sense of the curriculum that they're taking challenges them, um, requires them to dig deeply into the topic area that they're studying, and these are the kind of skills we, we like students to bring when they get to our university. Applications to U.S. universities are reviewed holistically. This means that all pieces of the application are taken into account. Remember that universities are evaluating you in the context of your background and schooling. And the most competitive universities will expect you to have excelled in relation to your circumstances. But most applications will follow a similar format which includes university application form or common application and admissions exam scores if required two to three essays, transcript and school profile, arts portfolio or writing samples if applicable, two to three reference letters, and an interview. When I think of holistic admissions, I know that's a kind of an odd concept, but it's really looking at the depth and breadth of a student and looking across all of their abilities, their leadership, their extracurricular, their rigor of curriculum, their grades, their testing, their letters of recommendation, their essays, and pulling all of that together and creating a holistic decision with all of the components. And one component by itself will never admit or deny a student. It's the whole. Like all universities, U.S. colleges and universities care deeply about the academic qualifications of a student. That said, they also want to understand who the student is, what they care about, how they interact in our institutional communities, wh what drives them, what motivates them, um, how will they react with a diverse student body. So we read everything in a file, from essays to recommendations to looking at extracurricular out-of-classroom activities to very much looking at the curriculum taken and awards achieved to, to get a holistic or a comprehensive picture of a student. Holistic admissions at the end of the day means about the whole of the student. There's not one single test that will admit a student. There's not one single activity that will help get a student admitted. It is the combination of the full of the student, and that's the critical piece, and we call that holistic admissions. The Common Application is used by over 650 American universities. It is the closest equivalent to UCAS in the USA and allows you to manage your application components in one place. Universities that do not use the Common Application may use the Universal Application, the Coalition Application, or an individual institutional or system-wide application. The most important thing to know is that the Common Application requires sections to be completed in a certain order, and you won't be able to access parts of the application until other parts are complete. You must send invitation links to your referees to upload the school documents and recommendation letters. 
The best and the most up-to-date information can be found on the Common Application website. The Common Application opens annually on August 1st. We also recommend that your school submits a school profile along with your application. The school profile is a short document that describes the academic and extracurricular offerings at your school, summarizes official examination results, and in some cases, lists university destinations of students. Although it is not officially required, this document is important in the U.S. admission evaluation process. There are students applying from different types of schools around the world, and admission officers need to understand the academic background of everyone. A template for creating a school profile can be found on our recognition page. Submitting a school profile is very important. Uh, the University of California conducts a holistic review of the application that the student submits. The important part of that application is the academic milieu that the student uh, achieved his or her particular successes. Um, and a big part of that is whether or not the student challenged himself or herself uh, with the opportunities that were available at that school. So for instance, a school profile will tell us what kind of curriculum the student engaged in. Uh, the school profile will also tell us uh, what were the opportunities that the student had. That's pivotal because we want to make sure that when we're reviewing the application, we're reviewing a student who was aware of the uh, challenging opportunities that were available to him or her and also took part in those challenging opportunities and succeeded at them. Transcripts are official high school documents in the USA. They are documents produced by an institution as a record of your academic performance. Your one-page school transcript should include official school letterhead, stamp and signature, years attended, internal school grades for years 10 to 13 or U.S. years 9 to 12, if available, achieved and predicted grades from the last four years of secondary education, combined Cambridge IGCSE or O level and Cambridge International AS and A level results on the same document. Official results from any examinations already completed should be submitted alongside the school transcript. If your school does not produce a transcript, official Cambridge statements and certificates of results for Cambridge qualifications are acceptable. If you changed schools within the four years before graduating, you should ask your previous school to produce a similar document. The transcript or official examination results are submitted directly by your school through the Common Application or other application system that the university is using. You should always report your grades in the British format as each university will weigh your grades in a slightly different way. A grade point average, also known as a GPA, is typically calculated if your school is using the American Grading Scale. If your school offers Cambridge International AS and A levels, then a GPA does not need to be calculated. However, you may consult the US-UK Fulbright Foundation website for a conversion, if necessary. A university may ask you to submit your official statement of results or certificates to a third-party credential evaluation agency in order to calculate a GPA. A minimum GPA is required for all recruited athletes for Division I and II under NCAA guidelines, regardless of national origin. If you plan to play a Division I or II sport at any American university, you can find the requirements and conversions on the NCAA website. At Vanderbilt University, we do not recalculate the GPA. We take the GPA as on the transcript from the high school anywhere in the world. We think it's very important that we understand the student, the curriculum they came from, and in the markings that they use. Then we look at that and as part of our holistic process, help understand the context of that as the student then would look, at, as we look at that student in the full pool of applicants. The University of California does recalculate uh, the GPA uh, for students who are from out of state or international. And the reason we do that, I think, is a, a one of equity. Uh, we're very, very interested in making sure that we're evaluating fairly students from all parts of uh, the United States and all parts of the world. Um, we have a lot of information about high schools, um, and we want to be able to use that information in a way that uh, allows us to compare the student's performance at a school 
outside of California with students who are inside California. We think that's the fairest system to use for both sets of students. As part of your application, your school needs to submit two or three academic recommendation letters. One or two of these will be from your Cambridge AS or A-level teachers, 11th and 12th grade years in the U.S., or 12th and 13th grade year internationally. And one senior school administrator, such as your head teacher, head of sixth form, or higher education advisor to summarize your overall academic and extracurricular performance at the school, as well as any other personal qualities or circumstances that are not described in your academic references. If you have left school and cannot contact potential referees, seek the university's advice on appropriate alternatives. If possible, referees should know you well and be familiar with your activities outside of the classroom. An adult could write a third reference uh, from an extracurricular activity, your job, or a performing arts teacher to create a well-rounded group of referees. You should meet with your referees and discuss which aspects of your application you'd like them to highlight. This might include anecdotes about you, academic potential, successes in and out of the classroom, involvement in school life, academic interests, career aspirations, and suitability and reasons for studying in the USA. It is your responsibility to notify your referees of submission requirements, formats, and deadlines. U.S. universities like applicants to be active members on their campuses and in their classrooms. They want to get a sense of your character, personal interests, and professional goals. And the most competitive universities will look for students who are leaders and innovators outside of the classroom. Show any extracurricular activities such as employment, volunteering, caring for family members, sports, school clubs, interests in the arts, or hobbies as part of your application. Extracurricular activities, or as we call it at Vanderbilt, leadership and participation, it's important that a student is contributing in the environment they're in. Because in a highly competitive institution like Vanderbilt, we're looking for the students who have taken advantage of the environment they're in, not just barely gotten through, but really took hold. And so when we look at these things, we're looking at, were you involved for multiple years? Were you a leader for multiple years? And that tells us the type of student that they will become at Vanderbilt as well. Extracurricular activities are very important for the University of California. But the important distinction for us when we review an application uh, is the depth of commitment that a student makes to a particular cause or to a particular club. Um, that's the important dimension that we're looking for in the application. Of course, traditional academic markers of achievement are essential, but we do bring in uh, the other things that students do uh, to give us a sense of the students' um, understanding of our university, uh, their commitments and their interests, and see whether or not they actually align with uh, how the University of California and its mission is going to be useful for their education. As part of your application, you'll be asked to write an essay. U.S. University application essays are much more personal than UCAS statements. A strong essay can set you apart from other applicants, bringing your application to life and showcase who you really are as a person. Check with individual universities to see what their requirements are and what essay questions they have to choose from. The Common Application website has essay topics with prompts for guidance. As well as the Common Application essay, universities might ask you to write two or three supplementary essays. Typically, the essays are 500 to 750 words long, and universities usually ask questions covering similar themes, such as your personal identity, academic interests, or extracurricular activities. Some real examples of essay questions include, what makes you happy? Which aspect of your curriculum or undergraduate experience prompted your application? How are apples and oranges supposed to be compared? Write about something you love to do. Because the questions can vary so much, you shouldn't try to force a prepared answer. Respond organically to the question. But remember to prepare a well-rounded application package. 
there should be lots of things you want to highlight across elements of your application. And personal essays are an excellent opportunity to do so. Here are some topics to think about. These are not essay questions, but might inform you how you choose your essay from the prompts given by a university. Connect the dots between your extracurricular activities and your schoolwork. How will you contribute to the student life or campus diversity? Describe your academic fit. What are your short-term and long-term goals? How does this university fit into your further plans and career goals? Important things to consider are address the essay question fully. Use clear, concise language. Say what you mean. Avoid general statements, cliches, and cultural references. Make sure all references to university names are correct. Proofread extensively. Read it out loud and ask several people to read it for you. Avoid repeating too much information mentioned elsewhere in your application and address any obvious gaps or weaknesses. We have a unique approach uh, to essay writing on the application for the University of California. Uh, traditionally, we had a personal statement that a student would provide. Um, we've since changed to what we call personal insight questions, and we offer up about eight different kinds of questions, and students select four of them. Uh, the important point here is for the student to provide inform information about him or herself. In the past, when we would receive essays, we would often receive uh, descriptions of inspiring individuals. Um, and while that was important and helpful for us to understand the student's particular perspective, uh, sometimes I wanted to uh, admit that inspiring individual rather than the student. I wasn't really hearing about the student. So we switched to these personal insight questions uh, to direct their focus um, and to have them speak directly about what's important to them, uh, what they've studied, and, and, and why they want to come to the University of California. The essay is such a critical component, and some of the advice I like to give students, both domestically and internationally, is to make sure that they're writing for themselves. They're not writing to me. They're writing to tell me about themselves, about a particular prompt. If they try to outthink it and write to me, for me, we miss a valu valuable, authentic piece of them. So the essay is critical. Don't be funny if you're not funny. Don't be dramatic if you're not dramatic. Everything doesn't have to be um, at this pinnacle. We're trying to understand who the individual is. Write like that. Who are you authentically as the individual? That will serve you the very best. Universities have different interview policies and might offer optional interviews before or after the application deadline or assign all applicants an interviewer. Admission officers or alumni of the university may conduct interviews. You might speak over a phone or video call to the USA, or the representative might visit your country. University interviews will not be a test of your subject knowledge or intellectual prowess. Instead, they often focus on other aspects such as your character, personality, academic and extracurricular interests, goals and aspirations, and your reasons for applying. To prepare for the interview, it's important to practice with your teachers, family, and friends. Always check the university's website for the latest information. The University of California does not solicit nor use interviews in the application process. All of the information we need is provided by the students in the original application that they submit. At Vanderbilt, we do not require an interview, although we do have those available for students all over the world. We have a program that we work with our alumni that offer interviews. It is a program that if you're not able to do it, it will not hurt you. But if you can do it, we would encourage you to do it. It's just one more piece to this holistic process as we look at the whole of the student. Universities can set their own admission requirements. Most will require the submission of admissions exam scores, ACT, with or without writing section, SAT, with or without SAT2 subject test. However, some universities are test optional, so for these you do not need SAT or ACT test results. A full list of test optional institutions can be found on fairtest.org. 
At Vanderbilt University, we have two types of scholarships, merit-based scholarships and need-based scholarships. Both merit-based and need-based are available for both domestic and international students. Because of the breadth of what we offer, again, I would um, encourage the student to look online so they can see all the deadlines and dates, but to really know international students qualify just like domestic students as we go through this process. Some universities may consider SAT or ACT scores when evaluating applications for merit scholarships. For more information about this, check eligibility for merit scholarships on the university website. One of the main reasons we use standardized testing is that it helps us normalize different curriculums, different high schools around the world. At Vanderbilt, we get 32,000 applicants for 1,600 spots, and we need the ability to have some normalization across disciplines and across high schools and across countries, and standardized testing allows us to do that. We have no preference if a student takes the ACT or the SAT, but they must take one or the other. Depending on your country of origin and the language of instruction at your school, some universities may request proof of English proficiency, often either an IELTS or a TOEFL test. You may be exempt from this requirement if you've taken and attained a satisfactory grade in Cambridge IGCSE English, Cambridge International AS or A-Level English, you study in an English medium school where the curriculum is delivered in English, or you live in a country where English is an official language. You must check the official requirements at every university on their English proficiency policies. The importance of English in the curriculum is critical for students to be prepared to come to highly selective institutions in the U.S. And so when we're looking at that, we're looking at for students who have really excelled in whatever program they're in, whether they're in the Cambridge program or other programs, they have to have been at the highest level and we're looking for that high level proficiency as one component of this holistic admissions process. Colleges and universities follow individual timelines for application. It is essential to consult university websites for individual application deadlines and policies. Generally, they can be broken up into four phases. Rolling admissions. Open the application process as early as October and close as late as May. The university will review the application as soon as it is received and release the decision within a few weeks of your application. Early decision or early action. Early decision. You apply before November 1st or 15th and receive the decision by mid-December. If your application is successful, then you must withdraw all other applications and commit to this university. Early action. You apply in the same time frame as early decision, but you are not required to withdraw all applications if admitted. You may still apply to other colleges and universities and choose one to attend by May 1st. Regular decision. Deadlines are typically from early January to February. Decisions are typically released between mid-March and early April. Students are not required to commit to a college or university if admitted this round. The final decision must be made on or prior to May 1st. Once you've decided which university you will attend, other universities must be notified and a deposit paid to the selected university as a confirmation of intent to enroll. Waitlist. If you have been offered a place on the waitlist, you must notify the university as soon as possible whether or not you would like to stay on the waitlist. The decisions for waitlisted applicants are typically released after May 1st, but in some cases sooner. Whether or not a university goes to the waitlist depends on how many seats are left in the class. If you are not interested, notify the university that you would like to be taken off the waitlist so that another interested applicant may be considered. It is possible that some colleges and universities in the United States will grant advanced standing for Cambridge examination results. Good grades in carefully chosen Cambridge International A-level subjects can result in up to one year of university course credit. Research the Cambridge Recognition Database to see if the college and universities you are applying to 
grant credit for A and or AS level courses or GPR. Then visit the college or university's own website for further details. Well, I'm quite certain that A level and AS level coursework uh, is, is extraordinarily good for study at U.S. colleges and universities. Uh, the kind of knowledge that the students acquire the kind of skills that they acquire, the tools that they acquire to do research and to speak about and write about their research uh, meets the standards that we look for. When we look at advanced qualifications of Cambridge students, they would want to go online and see we have a chart where it lists all the credit given for each of the components and the various levels. So my best advice is to go look at the Vanderbilt website to look at that very specifically about Cambridge. We hope you found this video useful as a guide for applying to U.S. universities. You can always find more information on our website. We wish you every success with your application. Best of luck. I think pursuing the uh, Cambridge qualifications at an early age uh, teaches so much more than just the subjects because uh, the whole process is very enriching. If you're looking to become involved in the Cambridge program, it's something if you like being creative, if you like you know, relying on independent thought and building from there, it's definitely something for you. It will prepare you for higher education after high school. When I think of a Cambridge student, and the preparation they've had. I think of them as the ability they've dug deep in a course, they go deeper in a curriculum, their curiosity is opened, they have an international perspective, and their writing across the discipline is superb. Mm -hmm.